Sleeping Giant AI altcoin. This is an artificial intelligence project that is sitting at the heart of a global narrative. With everyone from Elon Musk to the godfather of AI and even governments from around the world talking about AI regulation, this gem could be poised to explode. Welcome to the Bean Pod. This is your place for all things stocks and crypto. From beginner tips to expert picks, Use this as fuel for your investing journey, because when you're in the know, your money will grow. This episode of The Beam Pod is sponsored by KyberSwap. KyberSwap is a DEX and DEX aggregator, which is built to facilitate all your DeFi needs in one single platform. Fast, cheap, and safe. User experience is KyberSwap's sole focus to make everyone's life better in DeFi. Welcome to the Bean Pod. This is Shane, aka the Jolly Green Investor. And this is Josh, the Nifty Investor. Today, we're going to be revealing a sleeping giant AI altcoin. There is a looming AI regulation. The global narrative is slowly picking up at the moment. And this project could sit at the center of it all, mm. sitting at the center of AI regulation. And it could potentially be one of the only projects in the world that every AI project and company would have to go through. That's right. So let's kind of set the landscape here. You know, everyone, obviously, you've heard about AI, you've heard about ChatGPT, you've heard about all the stuff that's coming out with the headlines. We saw a massive AI altcoin bull run in late 2022, early 2023. We talked about many projects. You know, we saw things like Fetch, Singularity Net, all kinds of altcoins do massive numbers. And just, you know, the spotlight became on AI. That's cooled off a little bit. However, what we've started noticing now is the next, the next step in the AI industry is regulation. And you're starting to see headlines coming out. Elon Musk calling for AI regulation and pauses on development. Now you're seeing governments from USA, Canada, China, Europe. They're all going to be bringing in AI regulation bills. So that's why we think it's the perfect time to talk about projects that are facilitating AI regulation, both in Web 2 and in Web 3. So Biden recently signed an executive order back in February. They have the AI Bill of Rights for America now. And what, what we're seeing is also Biden just met with a bunch of um, executives from Meta, Google, et cetera, to kind of discuss the framework moving forward. What we're seeing is that AI could potentially be one of the most dangerous things ever known to mankind. Uh, Warren Buffett said that it's more dangerous than atomic bombs. Mm -hmm. um, this is the one thing that keeps Elon Musk awake at night. What can end up happening is that if we don't put regulations in place now, it could slip beneath our fingers, and then you could have evil companies, if you will, quote unquote, who are putting different programming languages in. What are their intentions behind cre creating the source code that they have in place? So, you know, Elon was quoted as saying, when he started OpenAI, ChatGPT, he, he did that so that it was going to be an open sourced project that everybody could contribute to uh, in more of like a decentralized manner. Right. What I've ended up happening to his claim is that it has become closed source and it's just for maximized profits for Microsoft. And I could see that being true. Um, you know, this corporate world, everybody's trying to make their money, right? But what ends up happening is if there's no clarity, it's like, what is... Microsoft's intention. Mm -hmm. What is the source code? So a product like we're, we're about to present to you guys yep. is going to make that transparency and the trustworthiness available to everybody to know what the intention is. Correct. And, you know, before we get into this gem project and talk about specifically what it does, I want to just continue... You know, if you, if you follow the show, you know we're always looking for narratives, crypto narratives. And you have to read between the, the lines and see the headlines that are coming out. So here's a few things that happened over the last... Just over the last week, really. So the godfather of AI, he's this guy, Jeffrey Hinton. He's one of the first people that started working on neural networks and all this kind of AI stuff that's really been the foundation of what AI has become today. He's been at Google for a while. He resigned. He resigned so that he can start speaking out against the potential dangers of artificial intelligence, right? Mm -hmm. So if this guy has resigned, this guy's, he's the father of this technology. He's resigned and he's speaking out against it. You know, people are not making a big deal out of it about this, but I think we're, we're really taking notice. We also had Elon Musk meet with uh, the Senate Majority Leader Charles Schumer. Charles Schumer. Yeah, so he's going to be um, leading the AI regulation bill. So we start to see the rumbling, and you look around the world, so we see European Union, the EU, have lawmakers set to vote next week on the bloc's first AI act. Um, even China and Canada, all kinds of countries. Everyone is introducing these sweeping AI regulations, so... I think it's important now to discuss what the implications of these AI regulations may be for Web 2 and Web 3. 
And then now we can kind of move into this project, which we don't see any other project doing and, and positioning themselves in the, the perfect catbird seat to facilitate AI regulation. Yeah, and, you know, I can imagine this regulation being laid out like you would have with something in the FDA, you know, food, food and drug. You know, you got to you gotta show every step of the way, you know, have you met the criteria here, here, and here before it can move on to phase one, phase two, phase three, et cetera. Right. Maybe in, in clinical trials, et cetera, right? So there needs to be a proof that you guys have done things correctly to the regulations. And is it going to be in the best interest of humankind? Absolutely. So the project we're talking about today, the Sleeping Giant AI altcoin that we think is set perfectly to take advantage of this incoming AI regulation narrative is Orichain. So if you look at what Orichain is, it's the only AI-based layer one blockchain and Oracle with specific features set up to allow every other AI project, whether Web 2 or Web 3, to become regulated. And when we say regulated, what may end up happening is the United States Congress and then eventually other governments around the world may implement a mandatory audit and certification process for AI projects. So they want to know what you're building, how you're building it, and what you plan on doing with it. Because, you know, right now, anyone can spin up an AI project, release the app onto Twitter or the App Store, and just be like, oh, hey, go nuts. But I don't think people that are even building AI projects know what the, the, post, the, the capability of these, these tools are. You know, even as Sam Altman, the founder of OpenAI, in that interview, he said, oh, we don't really know how it works. Mm. I mean, that's scary. Yeah. Right? So what we're going to see is potentially a sweeping bill that will implement these mandatory cert certifications and audits. And guess who supplies certifications and audits for the AI industry? Or iChain. Mm. That's, so, yeah, huge. Yeah. And it's, this is a company that actually generates revenue as well. They have the different packages available mm -hmm. where it's like 30,000 and you get this audit, 60,000, you get this. They have the, the different packages. One of the few projects that are actually generating revenue, which is great. Yeah. So, and you know, that speaks to, I guess, the utility of the ORI token. It's not just like a governance token, like many projects that, that come out in the space. The ORI token has utility within the ecosystem where I think it's 25% of every package uh, AI regulation certification package goes towards buybacks purchases of the ORI token. So in theory, the more packages that are purchased via all these projects in AI that are going to be scrambling to get regulated, that provides utility for the ORI token, which is being purchased through the package. Yeah. So it's not just a random token, right? Yeah. You can almost view, view this because this is the first and only AI Oracle that's providing a decentralized solution to trustworthy AI. Yeah. Like you could view it as like a chain link but specifically built for AI. Right. Uh, it built using Cosmos SDK, which is really cool because you get that, the IBC inter interconnected blockchain services that you get through mm -hmm. Cosmos, which we covered in our Cosmos yep. uh, episode. And it's really interesting that this project has actually, tr you know, Tron, a top 12 project, mm -hmm. has selected or iChain to be their number one AI part. Yeah, they launched a $100 million uh, development fund for yeah. AI and they choose our iChain. And this is a co company that we call small, small cap gem because it's only sitting at $47 million fully diluted yeah. market cap. Currently only 5 mil. Yeah. This is Tron. is their number one AI source at yeah. the moment. It's pretty cool. So, and you know, we, we spoke about how it's the only AI based layer one in Oracle and you know, you kind of spoke to the Oracle functions, but I think it's also too import important to highlight how it's an AI layer one. Mm -hmm. So that means it has an ecosystem around it, which could potentially grow to, you know, scale out to many things. So all kinds of dApps. And if you look at what they're doing on their Twitter, they've got an ORI chain hackathon that's kind of in, in, in the process of happening right now. So they've got, they've narrowed it down to eight finalists, which are all building on ORI chain. So you have projects, you know, we're going to see thousands and thousands of projects that are wanting to build AI based decentralized applications on blockchains and a ride chain being one of the only AI based layer ones. So you go through what's going on. You've got, you know, home lab d d designing home stuff. You've got optimized AI based for skincare, restaurants, decentralized science, smart learning, AI smart contracts for real estate, all these projects in AI, digital image, copyright storage and management system, AI audits. These are all different projects that are building on a ride chain. So, you know, whenever we do the truth about episodes, we always like to look at potential ecosystems that can grow. A lot of AI projects are not layer ones. They're specifically, you know, like Singularity Nets, a marketplace. There's all, you know, we, we talked about Ali, who's kind of a character GPT, chat GPT. Mm. Or iChain has an entire ecosystem, yeah. which could potentially launch AI apps within it. So not only does it have this whole regulation thing going for it, facilitating that, but the ecosystem, I think, is very exciting as well. We're looking at layer one with a $5 million market cap. Yep. 
and which is going to be providing trustworthy proofs of AI. Like this is huge, man. It's absolutely huge. And it has a lot of real world, uh, potential as well. Yeah, for sure. So I have a list of, uh, different real world utilities. So it can be utilized in healthcare and or chain can be used in healthcare applications, such as medical diagnosis, drug discovery, and clinical trial analysis. So basically the ride chain platform uh, can provide secure and transparent access to the AI uh, machine learning models, ensuring patient data privacy and integrity. Right. And the healthcare industry is, is massive. Um, supply chain management or ride chain can be used. We talk about supply chain management all the time. And, you know, I think AI, so even, even just going back to the healthcare application and the fact that it's an Oracle, right? It's taking web two data, putting it onto web three as an AI Oracle. The applications for healthcare and, you know, AI digesting and analyzing all of this healthcare data and spitting out web and results on web three, that's pretty cool. And then supply chain management, which is a narrative we talk about all the time, AI can solve that massively. So our right chains, it's sitting in a lot of cool spots. Yeah. So for a supply chain, it can improve transparency, transparency and traceability. So for example, it could be used to verify the authenticity of products uh, and track the movement of goods. You can do it for financial services. So you can do fraud detection, prevention systems. Uh, energy and utility, agriculture. So pretty much a ride chain can be utilized across every single industry, every single sector. And again, like you said, the ecosystem is building with the hackathon and the $100 million fund uh, through Tron as well. Yeah, so one of the ways, kind of the foundation of a ride chain, the Oracle, the layer one, it's something called natural language processing, NLP. And that's how they're able to, you know, potentially do all these things in all these different fields. So they use AI powered NLP technology to analyze and process natural language data, such as text and speech. So that's how it would be processing, say, the medical data or the supply chain data or the education data, right? And this will, this will eventually allow businesses to utilize AI technology to automate, automate so and, you know, become efficient at so many different tasks that currently maybe humans are doing. Well, now we can potentially use AI and robots, you know, things like data analysis, customer support, you know, generating um, analysis on anything in a business. Orai Chain is sitting in a perfect seat to facilitate businesses that want to do this. And this is, you know, a complete flip side from the whole regulation thing, which I think is probably the most timely matter that we're talking about right now. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's also important to note that they're just uh, onboarded too by Google's startup uh, acceleration program. Mm. So they're going to get Google's cloud service um, programming. They're going to get access to the developers, the security. So I think that shouldn't be overlooked as well, especially when you when you enter into a Google infrastructure, yep. all the different connections and uh, partners that you can ascent, essentially and potentially grab from that as well. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, when you look at the AI industry as a whole right now, just going back to kind of the first part of the episode, we're always looking to get into these projects before the narratives become mainstream and you start to see them all over Twitter. So if the U.S. passes a bill that's going to make mandatory for AI projects to review and test their technologies and get them audited and certified before they're publicly released or updated. And this is one of the only projects that allows companies to do this in the Web 2 or Web 3 space. I mean, it looks like they're in a perfect spot. Yeah, they right? are. This is, we're, we're getting in before the narratives really start to hit. There's a few headlines coming out, but if this starts to get real global momentum and you start to see big people talking about it all the time, then people are going to be looking for who's going to be the beneficiary of this narrative. And I think Orichain might be the one. It's probably one of the only ones. Yeah. Um, and they also fit, fit into the zero knowledge uh, narrative as well. Right, right. side of things. So for consumers, uh, end users can utilize the AI models without exposing their private input mm. to any third party. So that's infrastructure providers, service providers, and other centralized entities. So they had that ZK aspect going for them as well. Right. Um, which tied into their partner with Ocean Protocol, a massive Web3 project. And uh, also Syscoin, another huge Web3 project as well, which is utilizing Ori's ecosystem. Yep. Uh, and then they also have the decentralized file storage, which is another massive aspect of things when it comes to Web3 and how much data there actually is out there and how do you store it all? Yep. You know, so you can always also do that with uh, Ori chain. Yeah, that kind of fits in with their AI Oracle, right? Because an Oracle is all about data. And we have decentralized data storage and then the Oracle passing it from Web 2 to Web 3 and then allowing businesses to take advantage of all the other AI tools within their layer one ecosystem. They're building a very, very interesting project here. And yeah, as you said, you know, this is definitely still a small cap gem that not a lot of people are talking about. And one we, we like to, you know, you see a lot of people on Twitter and whatnot pump, pump in their bags when it's something sitting at all time high. This is a project that we found that has bottomed out. Yep. 
it seems like. Absolutely. And just in time before the narrative. Yeah, for sure. So no, this is this is a really a really cool looking project. Um, yeah, as we said before, so you know, around five million market cap, forty five million fully diluted. The token has a real utility. It's built into the ecosystem. You know, there's there's an endless array of projects that are building on a ride chain in the layer one, and then potentially are going to have no choice but to use a ride chain's regulation, certification, and audit systems when these AI regulation bills come through. So for me, this is this is getting right there in, you know, one of our top small cap gems, I'd have to say. Definitely in the top for sure. And yeah. if you if you pay attention to our top 10 small cap gem episode, mm-hmm. I think one of us might have put it in there as well. Yeah, absolutely. So, hey, look, if you guys have any other, you know, comments or questions about what's happening with AI and regulation or any other projects we should look at, or if you guys are already fans of our ride chain and, you, and we missed something, let us know in the comments. Yeah, then make sure you guys tune to the next episode. Because that one is going to be a banger. All views expressed by speakers on the Bean Pod are solely their opinions. You should not treat any opinion expressed on the Bean Pod as a specific inducement to make a particular investment or follow a specific strategy, but only as an expression of their opinion. This podcast is for informational purposes only.